Hey friends, today we are going to be doing a bunch of thrift flips. For our first project, a hanging wine rack, I will be using Sweet Pickens Milk Paint in the color Lantern. Stay tuned for a project later on and I will show you an even more in-depth tutorial on how to use milk paint. Some of y'all have used it, some of y'all haven't. It is a powdered paint that you mix with water to create your liquid paint. Now I've used a beautiful rich black color on just a couple slats of this wine holder. Once it's dry, I am distressing down the whole piece, bringing some of that beautiful lighter wood tone back through. To add something extra, I'll be using one of my JRV stencils. This is the Farmhouse 1917. I've got my 3 8 inch stencil brush as well, and I'm going in here with some DIY beadboard for my stencil. Now I am using a very dry brush, so I put just a bit of paint on my brush, and then I tap my paper towel and I offload most of that paint back onto the paper towel, that way my brush is virtually dry. I'm using a bit of a swirling method here to get great coverage. I remove the stencil, I got a nice crisp image. I did have to pull the stencil up and move it down just a bit to make sure the number 1917 wasn't hanging off that second slat. Once everything was dry, I again grabbed 220 grit sandpaper. I'm giving it a light distressing. I will wipe the sanding dust off with a clean rag, and then I'm going to seal all of the paint up with a Sweet Pickens beeswax in clear. Here I am just using a Viva paper towel to apply the wax. You'll notice a little bit of the milk paint comes off. I get a little bit of black paint transferred to my paper towel. That way I can just toss it when I'm done, but it does not rub off the beautiful white DIY paint. It, it seals this piece up beautifully. I paid $2.50 originally for the piece and it is available now for $24.95 after a beautiful farmhouse makeover. This shelf will hold your wine bottles in the top, but below it also has a rack that will hold your stemware. If you're wanting to find any of the paint products or my flips, you'll head over to my website, upcycledbybree.com, and I'll link as much as I can down in the description box below as well. Next project today, we'll be updating this vintage bread box. It needs a little update, but it has good bones and great hardware. So I sanded off the image on the front with my orbital sander and some 220 grit sandpaper. Now I'm just wiping it down with a clean damp rag. I did take a piece of craft paper and tape it over the top of the opening. Milk paint is um, a little bit drippier than the DIY paint. I'm gonna leave the inside plain wood. So now that's protected, I'll get it painted up. I'm going to be using Flower Sack by Sweet Pickens Milk Paint. This is a powdered paint. You mix it up with water and it provides the coolest old chippy effect. You'll mix your milk paint ratio one to one. So I've got a quarter cup of nice warm water and a quarter cup of my powder. I sit here and stir this for a couple of minutes, make sure it is nice and mixed, and then I let it sit for about 10 to 15 minutes. The wood on this bread box is very raw wood, so I did not want my paint to be too thick. I wanted to make sure that it would glide across the surface. I also did not add any extra bond that's the additive in the Sweet Pickens Milk Paint line that will help the paint adhere to a slick or shiny surface. Again, I've got very dry raw wood, so there was no need for any bond. Here is our coverage after one coat. We need to get a second coat put on and then we'll distress. This is gonna be beautiful. Two coats of paint are dry. Now, y'all see I have a bunch of chunks of paint. If you are painting a really nice piece of furniture or want a smooth finish, use an immersion blender and you can mix your milk paint up better. I like these chunks because now when I go to sand it, this is going to chip off and give me some good chippy finish. 
my bread box outside and I give the entire thing a good sanding with 220 grit sandpaper. Sweet Pickens Milk Paint is food safe and so is the hemp oil. I left the inside natural wood so it would be easy to store food in here and I'm just going to freshen up the wood with a layer of the hemp oil. I'm using a Viva paper towel. The hemp oil not only freshens up the raw wood, but it will seal up my milk paint, so I use it on the outside of the bread box as well. My last step is to add on one of these handles. I get them off of Amazon. I can link them down in my Amazon shop below. This makes the bread box look much more modern and will now actually help you open it as well. And a final look here at my bread box once it is all complete. Drop me a comment down below and let me know what you think about this simple yet beautiful makeover. For project three, I thrifted these two plain baskets and we are going to spruce them up. I'm using my soft tape measure and measuring the area on the front, then cutting a couple of pieces of drop cloth for each basket, one for each basket. They are about six by three inches. Once they are cut, I use my iron on a low temperature setting just to smooth them all out because next we are going to be stenciling them. I use the end of my fabric scissors here just to distress the edges of the fabric a little bit and make them look aged. Stencils by JRV it doesn't quite fit on here so I have taped over part of the design that way I don't stencil it on accident and I have taped my piece of drop cloth to the stencil. Now I'm going in with a DIY French millinery and watering that down just a bit so we are actually more dyeing the fabric than painting it. So I've got watered it down paint, a 3 8 inch stencil brush, and now I'm going to get a little bit of paint on my brush but still offload a lot of that paint onto a spare piece of drop cloth. Then going in more with a dabbing motion this time, I will cover the entire design with my watered down beautiful purple paint. Once I'm done, I remove the tape and I have a beautiful stenciled image on a piece of fabric. I love the way it turned out. What do you think? Once my design is dry, I place a drop cloth over it and use my iron to seal the paint in. The heat will seal the paint up and make sure it does not fade over time on my decor. After cutting four pieces of wire for each basket, I bend it into a U shape and press it down through the slats on the wicker. Then I just twist it up behind, making it nice and taut. That way this can be removed easily in the future if the customer chooses. And here is the look at my final hanging basket. What do y'all think? Quick, easy makeover, but it really takes my basket up a notch. I also included some beautiful lavender, and I think this is a perfect French country makeover. One basket has sold, but there should still be one available when this video premieres. I purchased these baskets for $3.95, used products from my stash, and selling them for $19.95 each. Paint finish I created on this beautiful lemon topiary. That dusty white concrete finish was okay, but I knew I could do better. I grabbed a DIY a Prom Queen, a Klingon R12 brush, and got to painting. I did notice when I was painting the coverage was pretty good but where the white dusting powder was the paint definitely was not adhering as well so I knew I could play on that and cause some pretty distressing in those areas. a couple of stencils here to create a custom look and I will link all of the mini labels and mini stencils down below for you so you guys can see all the options. 
I've grabbed a DIY Hay Sailor and my 3 8 inch stencil brush and we're going to do the same thing. A little bit of paint, offload it mostly onto the drop cloth, and then I'm going to work carefully with a stippling motion around this curved surface. I've got some tiny letters, I've got to be careful. using my DIY clear wax to seal the piece up. You can tell it darkens the paint up just a little bit as it reactivates it, but as it dries, it will lighten back up. Also adding some of the white wax into the lower points and the details, really giving this pot an old world look. I purchased this topiary for $4, had it listed to be painted on a live haul, and it sold for $19.95. Here is the completed look. What do you think? A little step up from the paint job before? For this next project, I have got a section here of an old bed frame. So I bought the bed frame mostly for the spindles. This was the headboard, right? And it was the very top of the headboard. Spindles came down into a different section and connected here through these holes. So I took all the spindles off. I was left with the big pieces. I realized this was a beautiful solid wood, so I didn't want it to go to waste. I cut it up into sections that left me with four holes and you know an even amount of space on each end. And then when I flipped it over, I was thinking it kind of looked like a little sugar mold or whatever, but how beautiful would it be with just some very simple floral in it? So I listed these up to be painted. I'm going to give it a beautiful chippy paint finish today with sweet pickens in moody blue. Mixing up the milk paint one to one ratio, just like the other projects, and I'm using an R12. The round shape of this brush hugs around the curves of this piece of salvage very nicely. Once it's dried a little bit, I do grab my heat gun and dry it some more. You'll notice that forces some beautiful chipping and cracking. I let it dry the rest of the way and then I'm able to flake off that excess milk paint. I did not use any extra bond in this project either. The wood had a bit of a finish on it so I did get a good amount of chipping on this piece. After I brush most of it off, I get 220 grit sandpaper and finish getting the rest of the chipping paint off. Now I've got my Sweet Pickens beeswax in white. Look how beautiful and rich this wax is. I'm applying it liberally over the whole piece and wiping back the extra. This is Sweet Pickens grit. It's a lot like the decrepit dust, but it is in a beautiful gray color, just a distressing powder. I apply that over the white wax in certain areas to really provide an, an antiqued finish. Then I get my drill, drill in some holes down into the bigger holes for my floral stems, stick them down in and glue them in place with some hot glue. That completes this makeover. What do you think about it? Do you think I saved this old piece of salvaged wood and made it into a usable piece of home decor? Or do you think my idea is silly? Drop me a comment. Let me know either way. I've got a little bit of milk paint left and I don't want it to go to waste. Once you mix it up, you need to use it or it'll go bad. So this is a thrift flip I've been needing to get done. I'm gonna paint this pot up with some milk paint as well, but I'm gonna provide a resist before I put the milk paint on by putting on some DIY white wax. That's gonna keep the milk paint from sticking where I put it and I'm thinking that the white wax, Maybe I'll heat gun it a little bit and that it will drip and bubble through the paint. We'll see what happens. Sometimes you just have to experiment and have fun. And guess what? This one's not sold. It's only paint. If it doesn't work, I can try again. And worst comes to worse, I can just re-donate it. <laughs> but it, we won't have to do that. It's going to be great. Y'all don't be afraid to play around with your technique. This is how we learn new things. It's just paint, it can always be fixed. I get the wax covered up and I go in with my heat gun and begin to dry it. And you'll see that white wax start to creep through the paint. 
and then I take a little paint over. I add even more wax over the top of the paint and begin to heat gun it and look how it starts to run and drip and melt down the side. I didn't want to get too crazy. I didn't want it to get out of control. So I stopped there and I start wiping it back. It removes the paint. It exposes the terracotta. It blends the wax. Beautiful. Then I take my sanding block once it has cooled off a little bit and start to distress. I don't want to go too crazy with the white. I kind of like this just random drippiness on it. I'm going to seal it up with some sweet pickens, clear beeswax. Just going to put a tiny bit on this cloth here. It is clean. Just started using it today. And the wax consistency is a little thicker than the DIY wax, um, but it is still very soft and workable. Melts in beautifully to your project. Also, it smells amazing. It's got a bit of a citrus smell to it. This is great for finishing your milk paint and then also over raw wood to refresh um, like the inside of old drawers and furniture projects. I'm gonna grab just a little bit of my grit. This is very much like the dark decrepit, oops, very much like the decrepit dust by DIY. This one is a beautiful gray though, kind of like a weathered effect. Put a little bit here on my artist brush and then I'm gonna just kind of work it up in the crease here. Of the matte texture it brings into this project after you apply the wax really gives a lot of fun textures. Switched out the old apples for some beautiful floral out of my stash. I've got some dusty greenery, some of the lambs here, and some beautiful hydrangeas. I placed them in and this topiary is complete. Such an improvement from before in my opinion. Drop me a comment down below. Let me know what you think of my new spring topiary. Paid $2.50 for the topiary plus the products and the floral and it's for sale for $29.95 on my site. If y'all enjoy these thrift flipping videos, be sure to give me a thumbs up and send this video out to a friend. Let me know you enjoyed this content so I can keep bringing you what y'all love. Let me know what your favorite flip was today down in the comment section below. If you haven't yet, subscribe. And then if you'd like to get a notification every time I upload a new video, you can hit the little bell next to the subscribe button and click that to all. Till next time, I'll see y'all later. Bye friends. Here is our coverage. Oh my gosh, don't even look at that. I swear it's because I was using black paint. <laughs> I'll drop the links that I can down below in the description box below. <laughs>